Yes. So I welcome also all, all my colleagues in Tehran. I'm myself in Tehran, but I'm getting ready to go back to Germany, to airport. So uh, uh, I'm very happy that I managed at least uh, at the beginning of my uh, at the beginning of this panel to join you and uh, welcome all the panelists and thanks all of them to accept our invitation uh, to join this uh, Nadima event, the 19th of the Nadima event, um, which is about uh, an important topic, namely uh, floods and experience of Iran as a country which has been affected much by this uh, natural disaster. Um, from historical point of view, um, I'm sure that we would have a very interesting discussion today by my um, distinguished colleagues from Tehran. Uh, I thank you, Dr. Nazari, uh, for organizing this panel and uh, coordinating uh, uh, the event, and also uh, Ms. Mohammadi, who also assisted us uh, to uh, basically uh, gather this uh, uh, very uh, um, uh, the, this 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 event today. So my name is Mohammad Farzanagan. As my colleague Dr. Nazari mentioned, we started the Nadima project uh, in the year 2020, uh, exactly at the time of Corona pandemic. Uh, but uh, uh, well, it was a new experience for us to switch from. Uh, traditional seasonal schools that we usually have during these uh, type of projects, physical schools to the digital ones. And I'm happy that uh, by now uh, we have organized 19 of these uh, type of digital panels and workshops. Uh, and today uh, is about flood. Uh, and uh, the project is about uh, natural disaster management, uh, learning from experiences in Iran, Germany, and the other parts of the world. Uh, and the project is supported by German Academic Exchange Service, the RD, and the Federal Foreign Office of Germany uh, to promote um, uh, cultural academic dialogues between Iran and Germany. Uh, and uh, we, are the, uh, uh, we are in the last year of this project, uh, and uh, we are very much looking forward for uh, future events and future collaboration with my colleagues. Dr. Nazari is a Associate Professor at the University of Tehran, Faculty of Natural Resources, who is the moderator, facilitator of today's event. And uh, he would kindly also introduce the other team panelists, uh, a few words on their background. And as he mentioned, um, during the presentation of my colleagues, uh, feel free to raise your questions in the, in the chat room that you see here. Uh, the event will be recorded, and at the end, uh, uh, my colleagues in Marburg uh, will publish this recorded version in the YouTube channel of Nadima event, which uh, the links uh, to that will be available also on the project website at the University of Marburg. Uh, just a brief background on Nadima and our partners uh, in this project. Uh, Nadima is a cooperation between the University of Marburg, the Center of Near Middle East Studies, which I'm working in that, and the University of Tehran, in which two faculties are involved, Faculty of Social Science and Faculty of Natural Resources. Uh, the Strong Motion Network of Iran uh, as a research institute. And uh, uh, basically, this is, this is the partners in Iran. Uh, and in Germany, we have collaboration with uh, Freiburg University and uh, uh, Teha Kohl, uh, the University of Applied Science in Kohl. And uh, um, uh, so this, this background uh, uh, for now should be enough, and I would not uh, take much time. And I'm very much looking forward for this event, and uh, wish you a great event today. Dr. Nazari, the floor is yours, and I say goodbye for now. And uh, I wish you a very uh, interesting and useful event on the topic of love. Thank you. OK, thank you, Mohammed, uh, for joining us. Actually, he is in the way to the back to the Germany. Uh, and uh, uh, I appreciate that in a, such a, a intensified program, he could uh, join us. Anyway. Uh, let's to start the program, uh, ladies and gentlemen. 
esteemed audiences, uh, participants, and uh, presents, presenters, a good day and thank you very much for being at this virtual webinar. It is great pleasure for me to welcome, to welcome all of you for attending another webinar series of Nadima projects, which introduced by my colleagues, Dr. Farzanegan. This uh, project is supported by DAAD and the Center for Near and Middle East Studies, Phillips Marburg University. The title of the current webinar is about an overview of the flood over the past decade in Iran, which is one of the main natural disasters in Iran as well as world. And I'm glad that it has attracted the attention of several researchers and students. For current meeting, four well uh, four well-known faculty members from different universities in Iran have accepted our invitations to present and share their idea and research experience with you. I deeply appreciate them at the first of these sessions. And they are namely Professor Sagafian from Islamic Azad University Science and Research Branch, <clears throat> Dr. Ali Reza Mugaddamia from uh, University of Tehran, Faculty of Natural Resources, Dr. Amir Sadoddin from Agriculture Sciences and Natural Resources, University of Gorgon, and Dr. Banafsh Zahrai from School of Civil Engineering, University of Tehran. As I discussed, discussed, the plan of the, this panel is as follows. Let's to give a short introduction to it for uh, participants. At the first, we will start with Professor Sagafian, and after that, Dr. Mogadanya will present, and uh, finally, Dr. Sayadoddin, of course, last but not least, presented. And after that, about 20 minutes, the questions and comments section would be about after the presenters. So the uh, participants uh, can write the uh, questions in a chat box for me or also take right hands in the question sessions. <coughs> Therefore, uh, also uh, the Persian uh, uh, attendance can rise in Farsi and I can translate it. Finally, the analytical interpretations and scientific discussions would be presented by Dr. Zahrai. I wish that the lecture and panel content would be so interesting for you and encourage you to have an active attention during of the session and could take the most advantages from that. So uh, let's to start with Professor uh, Sagafian uh, with a brief introduction of uh, Professor Sagafian if I uh, want to brief a long or to cut a long story. He finished his PhD in hydrology from Colorado State University in 1992 and worked in a soil conservation and watershed management research institute. Currently, he is as a professor at the Civil Engineering Department, Science and Research Branch, Islamic Azad University. He published more than 100 scientific articles in national and international journals and does research in a broad areas of hydrology and water resources, such as flood, droughts, monitoring, modeling, uh, water energy nexus, and etc. Uh, Professor Sagafian also teach a variety of course on hydrology models and GIS applications in hydroclimatology. He also was a, uh, as a head of the hydrology sections of special reporting committee on the Iran megafloods 2019. And uh, uh, Professor Sagafian uh, will present us a hydrologic overview of an exceptional 2019 flood in Iran. So I would like to appreciate for me to invite Professor Sagafian to start his presentations. Please, Dr. Sagafian. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Nazari, for the introduction. Uh, if I may have the presentations uploaded, Joanna? Yes, you have presentation, pres presenter it? rights now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you so hit let the, me uh, turn off my webcam in order to save some bandwidth. All right. 
Okay, uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome to Nadima Dialogue 19. I'm going to present on a hydrological overview of exceptional 2019 floods in Iraq. Um, just to save time, I'm going to have to go through the slides quickly. Um, this is the table of the contents that we will be reviewing floods in Iran, mission of the Special Committee on National Floods Report. I'm going to talk about hydrology and water resources working group under the special committee. Then we'll have a narrative of the 2019 floods. Aspects of the flood analysis, I'll present some of the results very briefly and in the end, lessons learned and the recommendations. Okay, in this slide, you'll see the uh, provincial distribution of the past 70 years and 20 years floods in Iran. We've had over 8,000 floods reported in, in the past 70 years in Iran. And as you can, uh, as you can notice, Fars province and Golestan province are the mostly affected provinces uh, in terms of the flood reports. We had the uh, we had some major flooding in 2019 uh, in late March and early April that caused considerable losses to, to the people, properties, farmlands, services, and infrastructure. We will go over some of the uh, evidences of this flood uh, later on. Following the flood, the president of Iran appointed a committee, a special committee on national floods report. That was uh, headed by the rector of the University of Tehran. The committee consisted of the of uh, 20 core members from uh, independent and academic uh, scholars, and um, some 700 scholars and experts also uh, cooperated in the in the with the with different working groups in the committee. Um, and the, um, the appointment started uh, in April 2019. The objectives of the committee, a special committee, was to respond to some 110 questions put forth by the President of Iran on the 2019 and past flood events. So the committee, the special committee, uh, took this procedure, review international experiences in flood management and flood resilience, Review 2019 pre-flood preparedness and inter and post-flood management in all sectors. Assess the state of the risk management in, in the country. Study economical, legal, social, cultural, communication, risk and insurance aspects of the flood. And also propose structural and non-structural reforms to improve flood resilience in the country. Uh, we've had um, uh, some 15 working groups um, uh, working on different aspects of the flood. Uh, one of the committees was Hydrology and Water Resources Management Committee working group, essentially, that was um, uh, uh, headed by me. And we also had the synthesis uh, working group that uh, eventually put, put all the puzzles together uh, and uh, presented the, the reports. Let's have a narrative, a hydrologic narrative of the floods that was that came out of our report in the in the water resources working group. You will see three maps here. The the one to the left is the is the is showing the distribution of the first rainfall event starting 17th of March and lasted for almost five days. The the the, the uh, rainfall, the storm hit north. Uh, east of Iran, essentially Golestan province. The second event in the middle uh, occurred uh, from March 24th for about three days, and uh, that, that event hit the, the southwest of Iran, the three major basins that we have in the southwest. And uh, following the, 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 the second event, you see the map on the right, that is also showing the rainfall distribution of the third event starting March 31st and again lasting for about three days. And uh, as you see, the, the, 
the period uh, between the second and third rain fall event is uh, is a uh, is a uh, uh, small five days. We had a number of cities that were hit uh, very hardly, very severely by the floods: Horamabad, Shiraz, uh, um, Gom, uh, Gombad, uh, Gombad Kavus, and uh, Poldokhtar, Hamidi, uh, Ahvaz, and many other cities and villages. One of the major um, uh, one of the major estimates coming out of this flood was about uh, 20 20.7 billion dollars in total damages. 25 pro provinces were affected by the floods, uh, some severely, some uh, a, a little less. And it was reported that 75 people lost their lives due to these floods. The damages to infrastructure 1.3 billion dollars and the damages to the uh, to the agriculture was about one billion dollars let's talk about flood correct characteristics in the in the working group we split the the tasks to the into the into three committees flood hydrology committee reservoir management committee and flood management committee the flood hydrology committee was responsible for basic hydrologic studies i'll show you the results some of the results the, the reservoir management committee was responsible to evaluate the operation of the dams prior to the flood and also during the flood. Flood management committee was responsible to, to evaluate the flood management within the Ministry of Energy and report on that. The subject areas are shown for the three committees in this uh, slide. I'm not going to go into details. I'll show you the results. That, that, that is related to the subject areas that you are seeing on this slide. Okay, uh, in this map you see uh, four major river basins, four major river basins. One in the northeast, northeast is called Gorgon Root River Basin that was hit by the first flood. And um, the three others are Karhe, Des, and Karun River basins in the southwest of the country. These three basins were hit by the second and third event. We also had Shira city, one of the uh, ancient, ancient cities in Iran that was hit by flash floods. And I'll show you some slides on that particular flood event in Shiraz. Uh, this is the map of Shiraz on Google map. This uh, slide shows to the left, uh, that's the rainfall distribution and also the consequent uh, flood hydrograph in Shira City. Essentially, Shira City flood was a flash flood caused by inadequate uh, passage of the, of, the, um, of the river upstream of Shiraz through, through uh, culverts that, 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 that were inadequate to pass the flood. So this is essentially a man-made flood unfortunately and that was a flash flood causing many death to the uh, to the people uh, during the holidays uh, and this is this slide also shows the second event rainfall distribution and also the hydrograph this occurred uh, in the uh, Saidi uh, township uh, close to Shiraz and again caused many damages and also loss losses of life in terms of the historic background of the of the precipitation in Iran, you see the cumulative precipitation in Iran uh, in uh, in various forms here. The the broken line shows the the average, the 50-year average of the precipitation accumulation in uh, in any in in a in in a water year. That that's the average of 50 years. And on the top, you see the blue line which is the wettest year in the in the history of the data um, now the if you look at the uh, the uh, the black uh, curve you see that the black curve closely matches the the wettest year in the history so some of the experts knew that the, this uh, this year would be a wet year after three months of the uh, of the after the first three months of the water year so it was predictable and some of the experts did predict that a wet year, exceptional wet year is coming up. Okay, now in this slide you see the six months 
of cumulative rainfall prior to flood in these four basins. To the right, as you see, Karche Basin. The average of Karche Basin in the first six months of, year, of the year is about 300 millimeters. The previous year received two, 219. And the 2019, uh, uh, the 2019 uh, six month, first six month prior to flood, uh, uh, the rainfall was about 536 millimeters. So, so even prior to flood, we had some 80% increase over the, over the average. So uh, again, some experts, uh, uh, um, the, by analyzing the, the, the rainfall data, knew that this is going to be a, a severely wet year. You see the same pattern in Karun and also in this basin. These three are located in southwest. Um, that were hit by the, further, by the second and third rainfall events. And you see to the left, far left, Gorgon Basin. In Gorgon Basin, the, the, the pattern is different. You see almost averages of averages of rainfall occurring in 2019. So the expert in, in that area could not address, could not really forecast the wet year. And that's why they kept the reservoirs almost full and that caused a lot of damages downstream. Um, these are the rainfall accumulations during the, 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 the three events. Again, to the right, Karche received uh, 90 millimeters in the first event and 105 in the second. Uh, Karun uh, received less and Des received 120 in the first event and 77.9 in the second event. So Karche and Des received uh, almost similar um, amount of rainfall uh, during the second and the third event. And also Gorgon Route uh, uh, receiving rainfall from the first event, 175. And these are huge amount of rainfall for just only a few days. Uh, we have three basic three dams, uh, earth dams in uh, Gorgon Root Basin. They are not very large, but they are moderately sized. Uh, you see the location of the of the two most upstream dams, Bustan Dam and the Golestan Dam on this slide. And Downstream of Golestan Dam is Gonabat, Gombat Kavus um, uh, city. That's a large city. And then the third dam, the most downstream dam, is Washkir, one of the oldest dams in Iran. And uh, we had most of the damages, flood damages downstream of this dam. And uh, if you look at the hydrographs to the right of this uh, slide, you will see that the inflow hydrograph to the three dams and the outflow hydrograph. For two of the dams, Golestan and Washpir, there is no attenuation. Therefore, um, the, uh, that was the result of uh, keeping the, the dams full prior to the floods. And that was a big, big error in, the, in terms of the responsibility of the authorities, water authorities in, the, in that area. In Karche Basin, we have two major dams, Seymour and Karche. Karche Dam is a very large dam, the, the biggest dam in Iran with almost uh, plus uh, 5 BCM billion cubic meters in terms of the storage. We have two uh, dams in, uh, in this basin, and we have five dams in uh, Karun River Basin. So essentially, we, in Karun River Basin, not much of a problem in terms of handling and managing the flood through the dams, but the other basins had difficulty in, in management of the volume of water. I'm going to skip this and this. You'll see in this picture, this is the southwest of Iran, the three rivers uh, coming down. Uh, to the left, you have Karche Dam, and downstream is the Karche River. Most of the damages occur downstream of Karche River. This dam in the middle, and Gotvan Dam in Karun, on Karun River, and uh, then uh, passing uh, through Ahwaz City. Uh, we, uh, we estimated that 14 point uh, BCM of net inflow was, uh, was received by the reservoirs in just uh, uh, the, a few days of the flooding. And in whole of April, the month of April, 33.5 BCM was received by the, by the dams uh, in, in total in south, southwest.
one of the major questions uh, on the on the floods was the estimation of the return period that was not an easy task because of the uh, excessive uh, return period that the floods have had uh, problems with outlier data and uh, and also non stationarity in the flood data anyway we uh, estimated that uh, in terms of the peak discharge we had uh, the, uh, a maximum of a 400 return period in Karche River Basin and a, a little bit less in, in Gorgon River Basin. And in terms of uh, uh, flood volume, as I said, we had two consecutive, consecutive events in the southwest. Therefore, we expected that the volume to be, uh, to be a very large return period. And you see in this uh, table that, for example, in Karche, we had uh, uh, close to 600 to 700 uh, years of return period in terms of the 15-day uh, volume of the of the floods, and these are huge numbers. Uh, we also have uh, 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 positive impact impacts of floods. Floods are probably the rare uh, natural disasters that also have uh, positive impacts. Uh, I'll just uh, show you some numbers. Uh, in the end of the water year, the, the total storage of the dams in the country was 28.6 BCM. That was an increase of 45% over the previous year. In terms of the groundwater resources, we had a very uh, good uh, recharge due to, the, due to the rainfall events in 2019. And also we had, uh, we uh, analyzed the, the drought and wet years for the whole country. The graph to the right shows you the severity of drought and wet years in Iran over the, uh, over the past 30 years. You see the, to the far right, the wet year, 2019 wet year, that's the wettest year for the whole country in the past 30 years. And uh, prior to that year, 2018 was one of the severe dry years in the record. So, uh, you will see a very, very exceptional transition from a severely dry year to a severely wet year for the whole country. We also had some benefits in terms of the uh, hydropower production. It was reported that the product, hydropower production was almost four times in 2019 compared to the previous year and also uh, we had many other benefits to the to the environment that was uh, studied by the by another working group, environmental working group. I'm not going to report on those. In terms of reservoir operation, we developed a few scenarios uh, and also developed a few criteria to assess the the operation of the dams during the 2019 floods. I'm going to skip this and this. Uh, these are the four scenarios that we studied from the zero scenario, which was the historical operation in 2019, to the ideal scenario in the third scenario, uh, and a number of uh, criteria, dam operation criteria, three of them on, on this slide and four of them on, it, on this slide. I'm not going to go into details. I'll show you the results, for example, in this basin. The two, uh, uh, the two dams that, uh, that are present in the basin uh, were successful in reducing 26%, 26% of the flood peak and also 11% of the flood volume and also two days of delay in, in, the, in the flood peak downstream. Similar numbers are shown in this table. For example, in Karche, 68%, that's a huge number reduction in peak discharge, uh, comparing outflow to the inflow, and 35% uh, in terms of the volume reduction uh, but, uh, by, the, by the dams in the Karche Basin. Similar numbers are also shown in this uh, uh, slide. Essentially, Gorgon Root Basin was the weakest in terms of operation of the dams, and Karche River Basin was, and, the, and its dams, they were most successful among the three uh, among the four river basins in terms of flood management the committee uh, uh, evaluated many other many documents i'm going to skip that because of limited time um, this 
the, the results are available in our reports. If, if, if you have time, you can go over the reports. That, that is uh, uh, on the University of Tehran internet site. So some of the key priority, priority solutions coming out of, the, out of the working group was to conduct regional fraud prior, prioritization in the country, to develop emergency action plans at national and operational level, also develop update reservoir operational rules for um, pre and inter-flood periods, maintain safe discharge downstream of the dams. That was a key problem in uh, downstream of the Karche River Basin, Karche, uh, Karche Dam. Uh, establish consistent well structure coordination among different decision-making agencies that was lacking during the 2019 floods. Develop uh, forecasting systems, short and medium term, in order to be able to, um, to operate the dams and prepare for the for the floods. Uh, that is also lacking in many of the river basins in Iran. Establish national water database in order to collect and disseminate the, the flood data to, to relevant agencies concerned with the floods. Uh, some of the key findings, very short uh, and brief, uh, the, the 2019 floods were exceptional in two ways. One was the large spatial extent of the floods that uh, that covered many parts of the country in in uh, in, uh, in in a limited number of days. Also, we had two consecutive floods uh, in in southwest. That was that was quite rare, and that caused a lot of problems with uh, operation of the dams in that area. Uh, the the uh, the return period of the of the floods was well over 100 years in many parts of the of the country. And uh, in that aspect, it was really an exceptional flood. And this uh, particular flood marked one of the most challenging managerial experiences in the country in dealing with exceptional floods and in general natural disasters. So uh, we are confident that the experiences gained uh, through this, uh, uh, this flood would benefit the country in the future. Uh, and these are some of the key findings of the whole uh, flood special committee um, pointing to the climate change studies and, and their impact on the floods and also the drought uh, improved the structure and functionality of the country's crisis management body, which is now, now, now a, not really an ideal uh, body to, to manage the uh, natural disasters, unfortunately, improve laws, regulations, and guidelines, uh, improve public trust, and uh, regulate the role of NGOs and government institutions in flood risk management. Uh, these are some of the key findings by the whole committee. And um, I'm gonna skip this. I think I have run out of my time. We also had a number of research papers coming out of the studies in this uh, working group. This is one of them uh, shown on this slide. If you are interested, you can contact me for further information. And thank you for your attention. Thank you so much uh, for very informative uh, presentations, Professor Sagafian, and uh, you give a very brief but very fruitful information about the mega floods on uh, 2019s. Uh, okay, uh, pr uh, participants, if you have any questions, just you can type uh, in a, a public chat box and after the presentations we can uh, discuss about your questions. Uh, okay, let's to follow with the second uh, presentations and uh, Dr. Mogadamnia. Okay, thank you for sharing your videos because uh, some of the participants would like to have the pictures and the video of the presenters. Thank you so much, Ali Reza. Uh, Hello, uh, Dr. Ali Reza Mogadamnia, he's a uh, 
as associated professor at the Faculty of Natural Resources. He is uh, a uh, graduated from a, a university, university of Sheffield, a United Kingdom, and uh, his major is hydrology. At the, uh, he also published more than 70 uh, articles in national and international uh, scientific uh, journals. Also, uh, he could publish several books and translates uh, textbooks in hydrology and others issue. He also teach flood management and especially about the flood hazards and hydrology in urban wattages. At the moment, he mostly interested in LID placements in the urban wattages in Iran. And and uh, his presentations is about the trends in flood frequency and the durations in Iran over past uh, 30 years period. Uh, I think that this presentation would be very interesting about the, the trends of the floods in Iran. Uh, Dr. Magadamia, please. Hello, everybody. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Nazari. Uh, I, I would like to provide a few slides and short lecture about flood trends in Iran and some countries of the world during the 30 year period. Let me turn off my webcam, if you don't mind, Nazari. Yeah. Okay. As you can see, my lecture uh, title is Trends in Flood Frequency and uh, Duration in Iran over a 30-year period. Next slide, uh, how can access uh, Dr. Nazari? For, uh, here, I found it. Okay. Do you want to do it? It's okay. What I talk about? I don't talk about uh, any general details or any general char characteristics or fundamental aspects of flooding and its consequences. I'm not going to describe uh, leading causes of floods around the world and Iran. I prefer to talk about trends in flood frequency and duration in the world and Iran. I don't consider uh, flood severity. As you can see this slide, uh, global warming as a fact. According to uh, IPCC and NOAA and NASA reports, uh, global warming is as a fact industrialization and rapid population growth have caused a substantial increase in global temperature, Earth's planet's greatest environmental challenge and the greatest threat of the 21st century is climate change. By the end of the 21st century, global climate change alone will increase worldwide losses by 100%. How has the climate changed? The climate continues to change, according to IPCC report. Human activities are estimated to have caused approximately one centigrade degree of global warming above pre-industrial levels. More frequent and severe extreme uh, weather events we have in the future rising temperatures, rising sea levels, and change rain patterns. According to NOAA and NASA, global warming is the gradual increase in the overall 
temperature of the Earth's atmosphere and also global sea level change over there is not uniform, which some regions are more than three times the global average because of melting of land-based ice and increasing the volume of ocean water and thermal expansion. It means warm, water warms, it expands. You can see in this slide. Disasters in 20, 2019 around the world. We got 479 uh, disasters all over the world. You can see in percentage of different disasters. Uh, here uh, you can see uh, flood events, 27% uh, of all disasters occurred in 2019. Floods are made more likely by the more extreme weather patterns caused by long-term global climate change. Climate change may increase the frequency and magnitude of flooding. Flood disasters are complex systems, which include the hazards, disaster formative environmental and exposure. The natural environment and human societies interact with each other to produce adverse consequences. Spatio-temporal characteristics of flood risk drivers include hazard, exposure, and vulnerability. We should use some strategies for flood risk management according to uh, these three elements. Reduce flood hazard, reduce flood vulnerability and exposure, and preserving uh, natural resources of flood plains. Flood trends trend around the world. Flooding impacts are likely to rise due to population growth, increasing economic growth, climate change. Higher levels of vulnerability to extreme events like floods are becoming a new normal in both developing and developed countries. Extreme precipitation events more frequently leads to extreme flood events more frequently and more severe. Impact of flooding is devastating in developing countries, especially urban watersheds, due to high levels of vulnerability, high levels of exposure to a flood and low levels of flood protection. Flood trend around the world, you can see in this slide, uh, the countries uh, with less than 31 flood events were excluded in this study. We, we choose 28 countries with minimum of 31 flood events during the last three decades, uh, the period of 20, uh, 1985, uh, 2015. This is a slide you can see uh, five uh, latitudinal belts of the Earth's planet spatial segmentation to assign the global flood events. Tropics, subtropics, uh, mid latitude in northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. We use data sets from uh, DEFO, Dartmouth's Flood Observatory database. Data include severity, location, start time, end time of each flood event. Global distribution of flood occurrence for all fl floods. You can see in this slide over the period 
2019. Uh, in the color bar, you can see Iran has a flood occurrence uh, between four to uh, more than 30 uh, flood occurrence. And this slide, uh, you can see frequency of flood events from the DEFO database and EM that at the global scale. EM that is another uh, database, uh, European historical flood database, uh, Haynes and emergency event database EM that. You can see in this slide, uh, it's got uh, suitable uh, agreement between two uh, kinds of data set. And this is slide, you can see the distribution of the start and end dates of floods within amounts from the default database at the global scale, 1985-2015. And this is slide, uh, we use uh, uh, Mankendall uh, print test. Uh, we employed uh, this kind of uh, test to detect flood frequency trends. The result of uh, Mankendall test you can see in the this table uh, according to uh, global scale or uh, different. Uh, latitudinal uh, belts uh, in the north hemisphere in the mid latitude and sub uh, tropics uh, we don't find any uh, significant uh, trend but the other belts we have significant trends uh, in terms of frequency of flood events. And another slide, we got uh, trend analyze on the median, I mean 50% of flood durations at the global scale and the five latitudinal wells over the 30 year period, 1985-2015. In the global scale, uh, maximum flood duration over 30 years in, in days, uh, 168 uh, days. And uh, for all uh, different belts and global scale, uh, we found uh, ha uh, we have a significant trend and increasing uh, trend in a significant uh, trend alpha 5%. And uh, uh, we, we decided, uh, ignore this slide because I explained it, uh, we, uh, we divided uh, flood events in terms of uh, duration in short duration between one uh, seven days, uh, moderate duration between eight and 20 days and uh, minimum 20 days and more, I mean uh, 20 and above. You can see in this slide, we don't have any significant trend uh, in terms of short duration flood in uh, for all uh, latitudinal belts and uh, different yeah. for moderate uh, duration flood between 8 and 20 days at the global scale and the five latitudinal belts over the 30 year period uh, for uh, tropics and subtropics in the southern hemisphere, uh, we got a significant trend, increasing trend. 
for others uh, there is no uh, significant threat for long duration flood i mean 20 days and above at the different latitudinal belts over the 30 period for uh, mid latitude in uh, northern uh, hemisphere uh, and in tropics we got uh, significant trends and others we can't uh, we cannot find any uh, increase or decreasing uh, trends and in this slide uh, according to uh, selected countries based on the number of uh, flood event per uh, 30 years i mean each year at least uh, one uh, flood event happen we choose 28 flood prone countries you can see here iran has uh, 77 uh, flood event during their 30 uh, years And according to this slide, uh, relative frequency of short duration, moderate duration, and long duration floods for the uh, countries with at least 31 events from 1985 to uh, 2015. Uh, this trinary plot shows uh, the, uh, according to total flood events, uh, we can see uh, in uh, in this slide in the left side uh, you, very uh, small i can't show it uh, in iran uh, he, uh, he's got uh, short and moderate duration floods we don't have long duration flood i mean uh, more than uh, 21 days duration And this is slide uh, as well, uh, because uh, according to relative flood damages due to short, moderate, and uh, long duration floods with respect to total flood damages for 28 countries, uh, we can see here in the damage due to moderate duration floods, uh, and uh, according to uh, moderate, we got uh, most uh, damages because of two, uh, two, uh, these two durations. And according to this slide, for uh, 23 countries, the data are available on the damages due to floods and expected sorry a little bit uh, okay here uh, a total of a total number of short duration uh, moderate duration and long duration uh, you can see this slide we got uh, uh, the selected countries, according to this slide, Iran is the seventh country with respect to the total number of short duration floods. And uh, as well, uh, Iran is the, the 18th country with respect to total number of moderate duration floods. In Dr. Mogadamia, sorry, yeah. I think that maybe we should uh, more quickly. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. sorry, okay. thank you. Okay, uh, I skipped the, the, this one is, uh, you can see the total damage due to short duration, moderate duration, and long duration floods using DEFO database. Uh, we, Iran is the 
fifth country with respect to total damages due to short duration floods and 15th uh, country with respect to total damage due to moderate duration floods. You can see this slide uh, as well Germany. Germany is the third country with respect to total damage to, due to long duration floods and 18th country with respect to the total damages uh, due to moderate uh, duration floods. I skip some of the details, uh, okay, because of uh, time limitation. Uh, okay, flood uh, trend in Iran. The extreme weather events are forcing many communities to front, confront what could signal a new, nor new climate change normal. One of the great challenges is to recognize that a lot of communities, a lot of cities, and a lot of hu human settlements in general were designed to reflect the climate of the past. Extreme uh, precipitation events more frequently leads to uh, extreme flood event more frequently and more severe. And fr the frequency of flooding has increased due to various issues including the impacts of climate change. Wood debris can increase the significance of flooding simply by increasing the destructive power of the floods. Flood trend in Iran, uh, this slide, we show some slides, uh, we show some pictures uh, because uh, Dr. Sarafian uh, show some uh, uh, comprehensive uh, slides and some more details. I ignore these slides. This one is as well. And here we, I, I want to get the conclusion. Extreme weather events are forcing many communities to confront what could signal a new uh, climate change normal. Extreme precipitation events more frequently uh, leads to extreme flood events more frequently and more severe. The frequency of flooding has increased due to various issues, including the impact of climate change. Only a better understanding of the fundamental characteristics of floods, including duration, frequency, and severity, and their consequences can lead to an effective prevention and redu reduction of flood risk. For this purpose, forensic analysis of flood can be useful with focusing on the analyze and interaction of risk factors, hazard, exposure, and vulnerability, and the identification of underlying flood risk drivers. Climate change, change is a crisis that is making the world climate uh, characteristics more irregular, as well as increasing natural disasters such as floods. We got different strategies for uh, flood forecasting, flood risk management. Uh, you can see this slide I mentioned for reducing flood hazard, uh, source control to reduce runoff, storage of runoff, capacity enhancement of rivers, and use watershed management for reducing flood vulnerability and exposure. Uh, some strategies here I mentioned, uh, especially flood plan regulation, uh, separation of rivers and population, uh, development and redevelopment of land use policies, and uh, preser uh, preserving the natural res uh, resources of flood plain uh, through uh, enlarged river space, flood plain zoning and regulation. Here uh, show the integrated flood management and components for uh, reducing the flood risk. And uh, we got here reference. A special thanks to Dr. Nasser Najibi, uh, postdoctoral fellow uh, from University of New York. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Mogadamia, for very 
interesting uh, presentations about the trends of floods. I'm sorry uh, be, uh, for interrupting, be, you know, that the, the time uh, is limited and we just have about uh, just 20 minutes for each presenters. But uh, during the discussions and uh, the questions, uh, maybe we have more time to uh, finalize your presentations. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you much for your time and very uh, fruitful presentations. Now, uh, the audiences and participants, uh, this time is the uh, last but not least presentations, but Dr. Sadodin, uh, you know that uh, anybody who works in watershed management in Iran and know that uh, Dr. Sadodin, because of uh, his works on integrated watershed management and modeling. Uh, Dr. Sadodin is an Associated Professors in Watershed Management Department, Gorgon University of Agriculture, Agricultural Science and Natural Resources. And his lecture is titled Into a Framework for Integrated Assessment of Flood Damages. One of the critical issues in flood and natural disasters is related to the direct and indirect and tangible and intangible uh, damages that the, the Professor Sadduddin uh, will cover this issue. Dr. Saadeddin uh, is uh, in, interested in watershed management, as I said, and uh, he, he is the director of mega projects on integrated watershed management, a joint project between uh, FRWO and uh, Gorgon University and other sections and university also directed in charge of a Journal of Environmental Resource Research and Editorial Board member for Socio-Environmental System Modeling Journals. And Dr. Sadadin, again, I would like uh, to thank you for giving us the time for sharing your idea and findings in, the, in this regard. And uh, uh, I highly appreciate if you follow the time, uh, 15 and mostly 20 minutes for your presentations, please. Uh, okay. <clears throat> In the name of God, uh, do you hear me, Dr. Nadari? Yes, uh, I clearly hear you and hope other participants. Uh, please. Good. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I appreciate Dr. Nazari and uh, the organizer of this webinar. Um, as uh, Dr. Nazari already uh, uh, introduced the title of my talk, uh, I am talking about a framework for uh, integrated assessment of flood costs. Uh, so, let me go to the next slide. Uh, as you know, uh, floods are unusual water level rise in rivers due to runoff made by rainfalls or melting large amount of snow in mountains. One of the most complex and destructive natural events uh, is known as flood and that endangered human lives and social and economic settings and is a serious challenge for development for most countries. Population growth, inappropriate land use allocation, and accelerated climate change altogether increase the threat of natural hazards and their environmental, social, and economic consequences. Uh, in this context, uh, we can uh, mm, classify the flood impacts into several categories, for example, on-site versus off-site impacts, or short-term versus long-term impacts. Uh, also, we can talk about direct versus indirect, or tangible versus intangible, and uh, beneficiary 
versus negative impacts uh, uh, of the uh, events. So, uh, if we, we talk about flood costs, we can classify flood damages and losses with four concepts of, as I said, direct, indirect, tangible, and intangible costs. So, uh, the focus of this, uh, of my presentation, is mostly on these um, metrics, on this metrics, total cost metrics of flood event. Uh, as, uh, and we are using a case study to, uh, to evaluate the total cost uh, of flood events um, that can be uh, generalized to other regions as well. Assessing the intangible and indirect costs of natural hazards to humans, communities, and natural resources is essential in allocating available resources. Uh, mostly in, in Iran, uh, we just ignore the indirect and intangible costs. So let me uh, go to the, through the detail most, uh, for the rest of the slides uh, of my presentation. Uh, in this particular slide, uh, I introduced the cult risk framework adopted from Joponi that uh, was established or developed in European uh, framework, uh, European, um, uh, a European project uh, in 2015. Uh, as it, it can be seen, uh, we have three elements, hazard, vulnerability, and exposure with their uh, uh, elements. And with the combination of these three elements or these three um, uh, um, components, we go to the risk element or risk product that uh, have four um, section or four types of cost that we are talking about the details in the next slide. Okay. Uh, this, this is the matrix that I am talking about. Uh, as uh, in this part, we are talking about direct and intangible impacts or costs. And here we can see the direct and tangible impact. Uh, so, clearly, in this course, some examples on this slide, uh, and we use this framework to, uh, to evaluate or to assess the impacts of flood events a particular flood event in Iran as a case study. So let me go to the next one. Uh, I, uh, let me introduce the study area. This is the Node Khandus city located in the Tilabad watershed, a tributary of the Gorgon Root River basin in Golestan province. Along the Khormarut River, with an area of about uh, 80 hectare or 78 hectare. Uh, as you can see in the map, uh, uh, this is alongside to the road and the town. Uh, so the, the green section shows the um, croplands and the gray area is uh, the town, the residential areas. So the, this is the case study. Uh, just two pictures of the river, of the Hormarut River. On, uh, in the, on the bottom, you can see the uh, agricultural land just adjacent to the river and are, that are exposed to floods. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the top side picture or photograph shows the residential areas on the left 
side of the river. Uh, so let me go to the next slide, uh, describing a little uh, bit about flood flood feature that uh, we, we are talking about. That flood, that particular flood, occurred on 17th April 2016. As a case study, the amount of rainfall in the morning and evening was 21 and 40, 54 millimeters respectively, and peak discharge was uh, around 83 cubic meters per second. Oh, sorry. That's, that's right. Okay. I, I just uh, uh, turned the slide. So in this particular framework, um, we show the, the flow chart of our study. Um, so field observation, interviews with local communities, and uh, completion of a questionnaire was the main activities that we have done during the study. I did, uh, um, through these uh, activities, we identified areas of at risk and uh, we applied 150 meters buffer from each side of the river. And also we calculate sample size with the Cochrane formula and uh, using the uh, willingness to pay method, we uh, estimated the cost or the monetary cost of uh, intangible um, damages. So uh, with this framework, we managed to estimate the, uh, the four types of cost that I talked about in the framework, in the general matrix. Uh, on the left side, uh, you can see the um, financial values for the direct tangible costs. Uh, and on the left hand side, we, we are showing the direct intangible, direct intangible cost with some specific um, um, cases and the amount of money that are uh, um, assigned to each specific um, example. So let me just quickly go to the next slide. On this one, we are talking about financial values for the intangible, uh, sorry, indirect tangible costs on the left hand side. So obviously, uh, there are uh, some major uh, costs uh, um, regarding to some specific. Uh, um, uh, cases, if, for example, for this one, as you can see, arranging and uh, re-establishing re the order, and also on the left, on the right-hand side, uh, you can see the indirect, intangible costs with the monetary terms on on the uh, bar charts. So, uh, if we just conclude the total flood cost uh, occurred on. 17th April on 2016. Uh, obviously, the total cost uh, is around uh, 13,394 uh, million reals. And uh, from this particular figure, almost 92% belongs to the direct uh, tangible cost. Um, but uh, and the, the other sections all together uh, make a contribution around 8% of the cost. So uh, just this particular slide uh, uh, reflects the importance of the direct tangible cost. But at the same time, we can see there are uh, contribution from other sections or other uh, aspects of cost that uh, if, if uh, although it is um, almost 8%, but from uh, different dimension, it, um, it is meaningful to the community to deal with these aspects as well and to overcome 
these uh, consequences. So let me go to the conclusion section. Most damages in the northern Huangdu city or town were attributed to direct and tangible costs, as I said, uh, almost 92%, for integrated as management purposes and to achieve sustainable development in addition to considering direct and tangible costs, indirect and intangible damages should be considered by practitioners and policy makers in particular. The need to design a framework uh, plus to develop a guideline and also to develop a software pa or package for practitioners uh, is uh, a recommendation of our study. So uh, if we can um, direct the practitioners to focus on other aspects of the damages rather than just direct and tangible costs, uh, we can uh, deal with these uh, multi-dimensional uh, economic um, consideration and assessment and to, to um, uh, conclude a more realistic uh, uh, information and uh, uh, analysis. Full dimensional approach versus compensatory approach is another recommendation of um, um, uh, this uh, study. Uh, instead of, I mean, instead of just focusing on valuation, economic or financial valuation, we should uh, we should um, consider the ecological and also social dimension for our assessment. Uh, uh, of course, we try to uh, to get the um, uh, economic valuation using the willingness to pay method, as I said. But uh, um, but in reality, we cannot transfer or uh, calculate all all dimension uh, into just one specific uh, figure. So uh, we should talk. Uh, we should think more about full dimensional analysis instead of just focusing on compensatory approach that most economic uh, or economics people uh, try to. It is necessary to take measures upstream to attenuate flood hydrograph in areas such as Node Khandus, which is located at the outlet of the watershed with area uh, about uh, 81,800 hectares. So, uh, it is real. It is a real uh, consideration to think about the whole system. Let me go to the last slide. Most of the damages uh, is related or uh, um, uh, is connected to infrastructure and the, sec the sector of agriculture. So, as uh, it it was uh, quite obvious in the um, bar chart, uh, the cost to the infrastructure and sector of agriculture are, uh, is quite high. And flood control structures such as rock walls along the river were destroyed. So uh, it is necessary to increase the strength of these structures and reconsider the location of these flood control structures. So uh, unfortunately, uh, this was another shortcoming, just focusing on uh, uh, structural measures or mechanical measures to control the flood, uh, instead of focusing on exposure and vulnerability elements. So the, the last uh, recommendation of this study is um, uh, uh, for the policymakers and uh, for the planners and managers of the watersheds that uh, we need to focus more on exposure and vulnerability elements with uh, some factors like uh, capacity building, coping capacity, uh, and also the susceptibility of the infrastructures. Uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, we, we have enough time to 
uh, to have more discussion with the participants and uh, get some feedback for future study. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nazari, for the time. Uh, I am at your service for any further discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sadodin, for uh, your timing. Actually, uh, you finish in uh, 17 minutes, and I should like to thank you. And also, it was really fantastic for me. Uh, uh, okay, uh, dear participants and uh, audiences, uh, at this section, we have finished the presenters. The presenting before uh, doing the analytical uh, conclusions by uh, Dr. Zahrai. Uh, uh, first, I should ask uh, the Professor Zahrai uh, to take the management of the sessions. You know that Professor Zahrai, uh, she is associated professor at the School of Civil Engineering, University of Tehran. Maybe. Everybody knows her for a very scientific work about the humans uh, and man-made induced droughts. Of course, she has a, a lot of experiences about the floods and hydrology, and uh, also uh, she is the secretary of the National Work Group on uh, Water Scarcity Adoptions. And, uh, Everybody knows her because of her activations. Uh, Professor Zahrai, I would like uh, to invite you and uh, <clears throat> manage the sessions for questions and also uh, doing the conclusions. Yes, hello again. Thank you so much, Dr. Nazari. I uh, really enjoyed listening to the very informative speeches of my colleagues. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, okay, there are several questions raised by the audience um, from different speakers. Uh, I would like to start uh, with uh, these questions first, then I can have some comments from myself as well. Uh, Mr. or Ms. Ahmadi has asked a question from Dr. Sagatmiyan, what is the effect of climate change in, construct, uh, in contrast of human effects on 2019 flood, how we can separate the climate change from land use change when it comes to floods? Dr. Sagatmiyan, would you like to answer that? Okay, do you have my voice? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. Okay, thank you for the question. Um, let me read the question for myself again. We, uh, in the special committee, we did, we did not specifically study the effect of climate change. Actually, we had uh, a meteorology uh, working group. Uh, they did not study that either. Uh, that required a lot of time and uh, we, in the special committee, we had only about uh, five to six months to reach the conclusions and answer the questions. So we did not specifically uh, study climate change. However, there is no doubt in my mind that uh, human intervention um, have uh, intensive effect on, on flooding all over the world. And also uh, the same is true with the 2019 floods. Climate change uh, has indeed, uh, we believe that uh, has indeed uh, intensified the flood, but it has to be studied quantitatively. We also believe that the land use changes have also inf uh, impacted the, the intensity of the flood. There is no doubt on that. There are a lot of study, studies confirming the quantitative effect of land use changes. I had myself one study in uh, Gorgon Root River Basin to, indi to indicate the, the, uh, the value of the changes in terms of the flooding, peak floods. Um, uh, in your questions that how do we separate uh, the land use change and climate change, that, that should be done through modeling, simulation, uh, calibration, validation of a model in the watershed, and then 
uh, we can look at different scenarios, or land use scenarios, land use change scenarios, and quantify the effect and impacts. That could be done in the historic period. Also, it could be done in the future uh, period in terms of the scenarios. Also, climate change can be quantified and uh, as an input into the into the simulation model, we can quantify the changes in the floods. However, in the in terms of climate change effects. As you know, the sub-daily variation of rainfall, which is uh, the, the main source of the flooding, cannot be easily simulated through climate change studies. Uh, that's that's the uh, source of uncertainty. But generally speaking, the floods in many parts of the world have been uh, have intensified uh, as impacted by the climate change and other sources of uh, of flood inten intensification. Uh, in many areas, uh, in particular in Shira's uh, case in 2019, is that the, uh, the uh, inadequate uh, uh, design and also management of flood passage through the rivers, and that was the case in, in Shira's. This is a, a, a human intervention that, that, that was uh, performed in the, by true error. So, um, 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 I think, uh, I hope that I can, I have answered your questions. Uh, in, in, in general, the, the, even without human intervention, I think that the 2019 floods were of substantial magnitude and return period, even without, uh, without climate change and, uh, and, uh, climate and land use change. However, it, it has been intensified by some percentage that we don't know uh, through, um, uh, through climate change and land use changes. Um, I think I have addressed that question, I believe. Yeah, thank you so much. Mr. Burji has, uh, has also asked you about the uh, time distribution of floods in Iran. Has it been changed? Oh, yeah, yeah. The second question, change? yes. Yes, I think he's talking about the seasonality of floods. Uh, I haven't studied that personally in many parts of the country. I, I cannot comment on that. But uh, we've uh, in flood studies that we've uh, uh, we've performed, we usually uh, look at the seasonality of the floods. For example, in in Golestan, uh, most of the most of major floods occur in uh, in summer. However, we in 2019 we did. Uh, witnessed uh, the uh, the flood to occur um, near the end of the of the uh, um, um, of the cold season. So that's not uh, uh, that's not general seasonality changes even in one basin. Um, uh, the the flood data is generally limited in terms of the time series, and there are uh, with uh, great uncertainties. So the study of how the floods may have changed temporally through different months and and seasons it's a it, uh, it's with with the data that we have it's very hard to to answer maybe in other countries with long series, time series they could uh, they could study this um, this aspect uh, we do know that the flood volume has shifted in many parts of the country from let's say forward in early spring uh, to the to the winter time, we we do know that uh, we can confirm that. For example, in Karun Basin, but in terms of flood, it's very hard to speculate. Um, the second part maybe could be answered with uh, by Dr. Mukatamia. Thank you so much. The last question for you, Dr. Sarafian, at this point is about. Uh... Uh, the role of watershed management check dams in flood mitigation, in, in yeah. uh, especially in the case of 2019 flood in Iran, were yes, they effective yes, yeah. in increasing the damages or controlling the flood and reducing the damages? What was your yes. assessment of that? Yes, we've done a lot of uh, well, some studies uh, numerically and also experimentally in in, uh, in laboratories to see what the check dams can do in terms of uh, controlling the flood, reducing the peak, and delay the, the flood. 
uh, there was a, a specific committee, a working group in the special committee, flood committee in 2019. That was headed by, by Professor Hassan Ahmadi. They did a study uh, this question in general, not quantitatively, but qualitatively. However, from, with, the, with my own experience, I can say that the check dams and many other watershed management uh, uh, practices, um, for example, land use improvement, uh, et cetera, they have limited effect on, on large and exceptional floods. So we do not expect the two, 2019 flood to be uh, controlled by merely check dams and, uh, and other uh, uh, source flood control measures. That's, that's really a myth. So, uh, but they would be effective in, uh, in short time uh, return periods, for example, floods of 20 year return period and less, they could be effective to, to some extent. But larger floods, 200 year flood, 500 year flood, not really much. Uh, that, that can be uh, demonstrated through simulations quite easily. Uh, so that's my own experience. Sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sarafian. Uh, I have a question for. Uh, Dr. Mogadamnio, Ali Reza, Mr. Salami or Ms. Salami has asked, has asked a question uh, from you about how we can find out the criteria related to flooding vulnerability. Yeah. Do you have any question. comment on that? Yeah, thanks, uh, Dr. Zahrai. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Salimi, yeah. Uh, can you hear me, Mrs. Salimi? Salam, Salami. Salam. Uh, I, I, I think they don't have access to, to mic, so I hope okay. that he can, he or she can hear you. Okay. Uh, as you know, the flood risk uh, includes uh, exposure, vulnerability, and hazard. Vulnerability, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how much uh, do you know about uh, vulnerability. Uh, according to uh, definition, uh, I, I want to say uh, some uh, simple, uh, facile definition for you. Susceptibility to harm or lack of uh, socioeconomic capacity to cope with flood risk depending on economy, social, demographic, cultural, institutional and governance factors. And is a very complicated uh, to uh, define or assess vulnerability because we got uh, different kind of vulnerability uh, such as uh, social, social uh, vulnerability, uh, environmental uh, vulnerability and physical and economical vulnerability. For, for example, for social vulnerability, we got different methods like AHP, uh, multi-criteria, uh, decision making PCA for uh, physical vulnerability we got uh, as well a different uh, methodology like indicator methodology or decision making trial method and for environmental vulnerability we got multi criteria evaluation especially in GIS uh, tools to achieve the community based assessment and for economic vulnerability we got a composite indicators approach, GI space, multi-criteria approach, flood generating factors, and so on. Uh, I'm not sure uh, I can uh, uh, give you some uh, clue about vulnerability assessment. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Salami. Uh, he's from uh, Esfahan University, and he appreciates your answer. Thank you so much. And uh, Professor Mugadam Nia, uh, I would like I would like to ask you also to answer this question about application of artificial intelligence in flood management. Do you have any suggestion or yeah. experience with that? In, in my slides, I, I mentioned flood uh, phenomenon or hazard is very complicated and uh, nonlinear phenomenon. And uh, we, if you want uh, to uh, use AI technique, uh, 
for uh, flood management. We can use for uh, flood forecasting and war warning, and uh, especially in expert system or some uh, new techniques like deep learning for uh, flood forecasting and the data assimilation, flood data assimilation. Uh, we got uh, a lot of uh, papers and uh, reports. Uh, if you want, I can uh, send you, so especially I, I have got uh, some uh, papers of mine. If you give me email, I can send you by emails. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mohad Amniyai. It would be nice if you can, uh, uh, in the chat box, you can type your email address so students or yeah. uh, participants okay. can uh, contact you after the meeting. Thank you so much. Uh, there is one question for Dr. Sadatin uh, about uh, distinction and relationship between tangible, intangible, direct, and indirect flood damages. Uh, can you? Uh, Amir, can you kindly answer that question? Uh, yes, sure. Thank you very much, Dr. Zahrai. Uh, I just uh, uh, missed the main core of the question, the relationship between these. Yes, the relationship. The... Yes, the relationship or distinction between tangible, intangible, direct and indirect fraud oh. damages. Okay. It's a general question. Right. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, actually, uh, can I access to the um, uh, to your slides? Yeah. Or yes. can I share my slides from this side, please? I will give if you uh, the. Possible. I will give you the rights. Just a moment. Thank you, Joanna. Just in case. <clears throat> Thank you. You should be able to go to the slide that you need to now. Okay, uh, let me just uh, explain a little bit about the def definition for the direct and indirect. The direct uh, cost refers to the first order cost of uh, the event. So that is uh, uh, occurred directly by the event, by the natural hazard or whatever you, 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 you talk about. And indirect, refers to the indirect cost refers to the second order that is uh, um, as a consequence of the uh, event not um, uh, um, the direct um, consequence so for example if a flood uh, hit a um, roadside or a agricultural land the disruption of uh, or the dis destruction of the it, or destroying the river and also the road is a direct effect, but um, it, uh, it will uh, cause another level of cost or damages that is not directly incurred by flood, but um, um, uh, we should deal with due to flood event. For example, for example, the workers cannot go to the another city for working. In a, in a factory and that factory uh, will uh, should deal with this this uh, in, uh, particular consequence as a, an indirect cost so this example uh, uh, can explain the difference between the these two order of the impact but for intangible we are talking about all costs all consequences that uh, occurs or occur, uh, but we cannot um, calculate directly or uh, easily by monetary term. We cannot estimate easily, but by monetary terms. 
for example, psychological event, events or if impacts. For example, uh, uh, trust in authorities, loss of trust in authorities, making order and peace, ecosystem services uh, or lack of ecosystem services um, uh, in terms of, for example, uh, amenity of the region or scenery of the region. So this, this cannot be um, uh, evaluated easily by monetary term. Uh, let me uh, give you another example for intangible costs in, the, in, in another, in another picture. Uh, just if I can go to my previous slide, just a minute, sorry. Yes, for example, uh, outbreak of a disease or physical injuries uh, or ecosystem services in terms of um, um, supporting or uh, I should say regulating, regulating services, for example, soil erosion. Uh, these types of uh, damages cannot be evaluated easily by monetary terms and we need to uh, apply a kind of uh, uh, economic techniques, for example, as I said, willingness to pay technique to estimate or to get an estimation of the uh, cost. So uh, I, I, I hope these, these specific examples a little bit explained about the difference between tangible and intangible. Uh, if, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, uh, Goli Kuchak also asked the question about the same thing. He mentioned that uh, the fact that more than 90% of direct uh, of, of the costs of floods can be direct and tangible. Is, uh, does that mean that we have to pay attention uh, to direct costs more than to indirect costs or all, um, or all of the costs are important and we need to uh, kind of have a comprehensive um, approach toward all these types of costs? Oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, of course, I recommend the comprehensive approach or integrated approach to consider all types of the cost. Uh, even though the 92% contribution of the direct uh, and tangible cost is quite obvious or uh, um, vital, but uh, still 8% is quite significant and also as i said we cannot translate all the costs into the monetary terms so in 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 this particular figure we just focused on the monetary term but uh, in full dimensional analysis or uh, assessment there are other aspects that cannot be trans uh, translated into the money term or monetary term or dollar i should say uh, icon so, for example, we cannot translate the ecological consequences, consequences into the monetary term easily. And uh, so, um, uh, in total, as uh, Dr. Zahrai uh, mentioned, comprehensive analysis or assessments is the vital point that I should uh, uh, emphasize on. Thank you. Okay, there is another question for you, Dr. Sadeddin. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Ms. Mustafa Zada has mentioned that is quantifying level of damages in relation to different magnitudes or extent of floods. Uh, and uh, I mean, after quantifying level of damages for different floods, is preparing the flood magnitude damage frequency curves uh, for different return periods can be the next step and uh, in which category should we classify the environmental effects of floods? Uh, Dr. Zahri, I, to, honestly, I, I, I couldn't uh, understand the, the theme of the question. Could you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I'm going to repeat. Uh, uh, whenever we uh, quantify the level of damages for different floods with uh, yes. uh, with different severity. Uh, right, yeah. Can we then make, uh, can we then uh, develop flood magnitude damage frequency curves for different return periods? Is that necessary? Uh, okay. Yes. 
Uh, actually, uh, to my to my knowledge, it can be done, uh, but it is not a, an easy task. So, yeah. uh, my suggestion would be uh, to assess the uh, comprehensive or integrated uh, cost for any specific uh, flood with one um, specific or related um, or co correspondent re return period. But going to uh, further analysis, I mean, going for uh, going to uh, different return periods and analyzing the um, uh, corresponding uh, consequences would be a very different, a di very different task, to my knowledge. Yeah, and uh, what about uh, environmental effects of floods? What kind of, how do you classify them in terms of direct or indirect or? tangible or intangible costs? Oh, for the ecological consequences, you ask? Yes, uh, okay. yes. Okay, so for the ecological one, uh, 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 we, we can put in the intangible cost, definitely. But for some of the ecological damages, we, we have direct intangible um, category. And for, the, for some of them, uh, it goes to the indirect intangible categories for example let me just uh, uh, again focus on my slide uh, for ecosystem services such such as ecosystem uh, soil erosion uh, I, I should say the regulatory services that goes to the direct intangible cost section but for uh, amenity or the cultural services that goes to the indirect intangible cost. So uh, in, in general, we, we, we will have the ecosystem or the ecological consequences definitely in intangible uh, category, but some of them goes to the direct and some belongs to the indirect section. I hope uh, my explanation is enough. In, yeah, know, thank you so much. There are a um, couple of more questions I, because we have reached uh, the, uh, uh, we almost have reached the end of our meeting. So I'm going to ask uh, participants who have questions from uh, the presenter, the presenters to email their quest, their questions and uh, hopefully um, professors will answer the questions after the meeting. Thank you so much. Dr. Nazari, uh, uh, Dr. do I Zahra, have a... Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I yeah, just... Sure. Add, excuse me. Can I contribute to the question that doc, uh, Dr. Sarapian uh, uh, answered that? Uh, sure. sure. Related, thank you. Related to the check dam effect uh, on uh, flood attenuation and uh, so on, just I wanted to... Uh, briefly highlight the impact uh, or mm, uh, the effects of the check dams on sediment budget or sediment regime of the um, river or of the flood. So we, we can deal with sediment budget and also with the water uh, section of the flood. So um, I, I mean, uh, check dams probably can contribute to a limit or to lower the uh, part uh, sediment participation or sediment uh, contribution to flood that makes a significant uh, uh, positive impact on limiting the energy of water or energy of a flood. So just so I wanted to, to bring this point up to, for further discussion if Dr. Sarafian and other uh, other colleagues or participants would like. Thank you. Thank you so much. There was one comment of using uh, alarms in uh, Golestan province. I think uh, some of the participants suggested that we could use alarms for uh, um, for flooding, such as the case of. Uh, the flood of 2019 I'm sure that there are a lot of discussion about those kind of 
uh, facilities that can be used. Okay, Dr. Nazari, can I add some points or because we have reached uh, the end of the meeting, can can I add some points or you're gonna yes, conclude the meeting? Uh, yes, definitely, you know, that the end of sessions is, it's very important that we uh, use your uh, conclusions. It's actually very important, I think, for participants. Of course, I have a very small, uh, short movies about the uh, fellows that uh, I think I miss it, but I send the file to upload for participants uh, about the uh, assessment of the floods, uh, mega uh, 2019 floods. Uh, it's the reports um, uh, about the assessments of tangible and intangible of the mega flood 2019, maybe be uh, uh, usable for participants. Uh, we, uh, we are at the end of sessions, but uh, uh, Dr. Zahrai, please, I think we have time for your conclusions. Can you do it, please? Yeah, sure, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not gonna take uh, a long time. Dr. Sarafian mentioned that we experienced uh, a draw to wet spell transition in 2019. Actually, for uh, some time, we were celebrating ending of a long drought spell after the floods of 2019, and uh, there was a confusion surrounding uh, wet and especially drought spells definition in Iran in the past couple of years, uh, especially among the policymakers. For example, we still use uh, 50 or so, some some 50 years. Uh, long-term average for different differentiating between the wet and dry spells, and that is why uh, we can see that policymakers uh, in Iran has been providing drought compensation funds to farmers almost every year in the past two decades. Um, the same is almost true for floods, I guess. There has been lots of developments either authorized or unauthorized in uh, floodplains, and these developments are the main reason behind flood losses in most flood events happened in the past uh, couple of decades in Iran. And I think lack of land use management in floodplains um, has been the major driver behind increased vulnerability and exposure to floods. Uh, as Professor Mogadamnia also mentioned, climate change has played its role, but we have to differentiate between the climate change impacts and uh, improper land use management in, in floodplains. There was some, uh, uh, some uh, talks about flood control stru uh, structures destroyed in the 2019 uh, floods, especially in Golestan province. Uh, these uh, structures, uh, as it was discussed, are effective in uh, controlling small floods, but when it comes to large floods, they are uh, uh, destroyed and they can uh, add up to the um, losses of, of, of the floods. And uh, I think it's important because in Iran, we have been spending a lot of uh, money in the past couple of years on, on this uh, on development of these flood control stru structures. So we have to have a comprehensive view of uh, how to manage and control large and small floods all together. And that is, that is the point that was mentioned by uh, some of the pre uh, presenters, differentiating between direct, indirect, tangible and intangible costs, and especially the uh, environmental losses uh, of the floods is very important. And we have to also uh, pay enough attention to that. So uh, uh, Dr. Sarafian also mentioned that the return period of the uh, 2019 flood was well beyond uh, 100 years. Uh, and I know that there, there are still some confusion about how, uh, what, how, uh, how, how much was the return period of that flood in different parts of the country. So um, um, data and information plays a significant role in how we can assess the floods and how we can uh, plan for uh, managing and controlling the floods. So uh, I would like to also, at the end of the meeting, uh, emphasize on the important role of uh, um, improving the flood uh, monitoring uh, system in Iran. Uh, 
uh, from meteorology stations to uh, river discharge measurements and also land use uh, monitoring systems. Thank you so much, Dr. Nazel. Okay, uh, thank you so much for uh, very uh, pointed uh, conclusions, uh, Dr. Zahrai. Uh, we are approaching to the end of the sessions. I know that uh, first and most of all, I should uh, apologize for some of uh, persons because they sent some questions, but unfortunately we cannot cover this. Actually, flood is a, a very vast and big uh, <clears throat> subjects and I know that a lot of questions are in the mind of the uh, participants but uh, the time of this uh, uh, webinar and panel is limited and the, the, the uh, actually the maximum time is 110 minutes and also we pass 10 minutes from this sorry it, this is show that how much it was fantastic for participants and how much the presenters uh, contents were so interesting for the pres uh, participants that they ask a lot of questions and this is one of the main aims of the uh, this project nadima and daab again uh, i should like to thanks the, the participants and for their times and attentions and also i would like to thanks the uh, steam presenters, uh, Professor Sagatian, Dr. Mogadnam Nia, and Dr. Amir Sadodin from different university. Actually, uh, it takes a lot of times for them uh, for organizing this uh, presenting, and uh, I hope that these presentations could uh, enhance uh, our common uh, uh, sense and our common knowledge on the uh, flood as a uh, destructive uh, natural disasters uh, 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 this the findings uh, show that the flood is uh, it's uh, it's not only the man-made also the the climate issue that uh, complete with the uh, physical surface of the earth and uh, so it's really different from uh, place to place and time to time not only the spatial a change but also the temporal change of the floods pattern and, uh, and uh, unfortunately in Iran uh, we have a lot of problem about the flood in the same provinces that they are faced into the droughts for example in Khuzestan or in Fars or in Kerman one year we have a suffering the people suffering from droughts and the next year suffering from the floods and uh, so it's it, it makes it uh, complicated, but uh, I think that maybe it is necessary to uh, <coughs> compile different uh, natural disasters get together and maybe in the future or uh, panels we could uh, cover or include address the multiple hazards, uh, natural disaster hazards. <coughs> and also I hope that after the COVID-19 it will be possible for in-person uh, sessions instead of webinar sessions. <clears throat> anyway, I should thank you also about uh, uh, Nadima staff team in the Marwuk University and uh, Joanna Mahmoud and uh, Dr. Farzanagan. Uh, again, I should thank you for all, you and all participants and uh, especially the presenters and also the Marwuk team. Uh, this is the end of the webinar and uh, I hope the best uh, time and weekend for the persons in Iran and also Shona and Nakh for the German colleagues. <clears throat>